Hey guys, so Cal Val here. You are listening to the Hitting the Turnbuckle podcast. Welcome everybody back to the Hitting the Turnbuckle channel. I am your host Adam Cousins and Smackdown has finished only a few short hours ago. <clears throat> Smackdown centered around the return of Randy Orton and a decision that he has to make going forward and we'll get into that. But Smackdown started with Damage Control segment with the whole of Damage Control minus Bailey, with Bianca, Shotzi and Charlotte. Bianca wants the title back, Charlotte wants the title back. Shotzi said there was enough damage control to go around, and that led to a big brawl to kick off SmackDown, of which at the end of that brawl, uh, damage control were having a go at Bailey for not showing up. So are they turning to the point where they're going to kick Bailey out of damage control? We know that that's potentially going to happen. Could that lead to the return of Sasha Banks to help Bailey going forward? You know, there is rumours that there is rumours that talks are progressing with Sasha Banks and the WWE. So it'll be very interesting as we lead up to the Royal Rumble to find out where, what direction they're going in. But it seems as if the dissension within damage control now is at a point where they're getting ready to move Bailey out of the group. First match on the show, Bobby Lashley uh, was going one on one with Butch. Butch, obviously, from last week where uh, Ridge left him uh, in the match. So he's now on his own. Uh, Bobby Lashley picks up the victory with the spear with that match. Um, just, I think they're moving in the way where we're going to see Pete Dunn return instead of Butch, hopefully. Uh, we're not sure what's going to happen with Ridge, but Bobby Lashley wins that. And actually, next week on the Tribute to the Troops SmackDown special, Bobby Lashley will be a part of the US title tournament, which we'll talk about uh, very in a minute. So it could give Bobby Lashley a chance to win bit of gold back. Uh, he was a former United States champion uh, very, very recently as well. Um, Nick Aldis is there with a SmackDown contract. He wants to sign Randy Orton to a permanent, exclusive SmackDown deal. Adam Pearce is also there as well to try and sign Randy Orton to a Raw SmackDown contract. Paul Heyman, <clears throat> Paul Heyman at this point asks, you know, if he's supposed, if, if Nick Aldis has put the whole Sorry, Paul Heyman has asked if Roman Reigns knows about this. And Nick Aldis has said he would put the entire bloodline up as bait to sign Randy Orton to smack them. Uh, and the next point was Santos Escobar and Jack Joaquin Wild. Um, this was a really good contest, actually, between two great competitors. Um, Santos Escobar gets the win with a Shibata dropkick on this. Um, but a good one for that. It was a bit obvious Santos was going to win. He's broken away from the LWO. He's forging his own path. And he seems to be taking the whole NWO and LWO with him. Uh, so we'll see what happens with that. Raymond Steer is obviously out for a while, so he won't be getting his revenge on Santos for at least a little bit anyway. Um, we had the confrontation with Nick Holdis and Adam Pearce about the contract situation with Randy Orton. Uh, him, Adam Pearce was going to join Nick Holdis in the ring later on. Uh, Tempt Randy Orton to war. At this point, Logan Paul, Kevin Owens, Austin Fury, and Grayson Waller had a segment. Kevin Owens is really coming after the US title. <clears throat> Logan Paul is now back in WWE for a while, by the sounds of it. Uh, Grayson Waller and Austin Fury just winding Kevin Owens up uh, for the whole of this segment. And Owens ended up dropping Fury with a jab uh, at the end of the segment and then goes up against Grayson Waller, which he pins him, <clears throat> which he does win uh, that particular match. He's, it's a strange one. Kevin Owens, yes, I can see the why they're putting him for the US title, but Logan Paul and Austin Fury are seeming to be lost now. We've been talking about this on the show for a while, how Austin Fury was this WrestleMania, a big match with Cena. Cena destroys him on the microphone. And we've not really seen, although Fury picked up the win, he hasn't pushed on at all from that. Um, so... Fury seems to be stuck in the, the middle of some of nothing really, and, and Waller is now with him. Waller's a really good athlete as well, great on the mic, good competitor. So I'm a bit uh, surprised, about that. but I don't know what we don't know what's going to happen going forward with those two. But Austin Fury is definitely lost touch, so to speak. Um, the fourth match was Bianca Bia versus Carrie Sane. Bianca wins that by a pinfall. 
Um, the problem with this is it's, I mean, we haven't seen Carrick Sane a lot, but it's the same feud. And the, the, they started off the show saying the feud, you know, this feud was far from over. It needs to be over because it's just taking too long now. And Carrick Sane is a new one to add to the mix for sure, going against Bianca and, and losing. But we've seen this feud for so long now. Um, you know, Charlotte wants a title again as well. Probably shot. She wants to have a shot at a title. They're willing to go through everyone in, in damage control, but oh, we've seen it. It's just been to say, I've got no problem with the women getting the TV time, but it's just we've seen this all before, unfortunately. Um, and yeah, it's not, not really this good for me to be seeing this all over again. The main part of SmackDown was Randy Orton's contract signing. Who was he going to be? Who was he going to go to? Who was he going to join? Uh, this was a very back and forth between Adam Pearce and Nick Aldis trying to get Randy uh, to sign. And Nick Aldis made the point that the bloodline, the people that took him out were on this show. This brings out Paul Heyman. Then the bloodline attack. And they go for Randy Orton, Jimmy and so they go for Randy trying to attack Randy Orton. That brings out L.A. Knight, who assists Randy Orton with cleaning house. Randy Orton has both the contracts in his hand and he throws one away. And the one that he threw away was the contract to Monday Night Raw. He signs the SmackDown contract. He gets on the microphone and says, Paul Heyman, call Roman Reigns and tell him, you tell him, daddy's back. <laughs> and then Nick Aldis gets in the ring, holds up the hand of Randy Orton. Bang. He hits him with the three most devastating letters in wrestling. The RKO. The RKO is Nick Aldis to end the segment. But Randy Orton is now officially SmackDown's brand. So going forward exclusively to SmackDown, which generally means exclusive to SmackDown unless WWE won him on Raw. You know, we, we know this doesn't really uh, matter anymore, but exclusivity to SmackDown, storyline purposes, Randy Orton. So we know the direction now that the Viper is heading towards. He's heading towards a showdown with the tribal chief, Roman Reigns, which I'm assuming will be at the Royal Rumble. But guys, this was a much better episode of SmackDown. It's been on a lull quite recently. This one was fantastic. Really enjoyed this uh, episode. Uh, really good one. And hopefully next week is a tribute to the troops special. CM Punk will be on SmackDown next week, uh, as well as Dragon Lee versus Santos Escobar, Bobby Lashley versus Karrion Cross in the US title tournament, and Charlotte Flair will take on the Empress of Tomorrow, Oscar. But guys, this has been the SmackDown Review Show. Hit us up on Twitter on HTT Buckle. Hit hitting the term Buckle podcast across all other socials and you'll find us. We have coming up on the show, CJ Carter will be doing a, a year review with Ignite. So we're going to have the host of Joy, the general manager of uh, Ignite Wrestling, CJ Carter, back on the show to discuss the whole year of Ignite Wrestling. We're going to have Eric Bischoff back in a couple of weeks' time uh, to discuss part two. We left it at TNA. We're going to be doing TNA, WWE, fan questions. Myself, Fiona, and David will be on that. And also, another guest that we're just finalising the date. It could be the first guest of 2024. Could be none other than the former Adam Bomb, the former member of Chronic, Brian Clark. Uh, maybe will be joining us soon. We just need to work out the dates but we've got a commitment from brian to be joining us soon for a chat so we're looking forward to that as well guys we'll be back tomorrow with the dynamite review collision review myself and dave are going to be all over aew tomorrow so look forward to seeing uh those videos dropping but until then everybody buckle down and stay safe